Today, we're discussing the best weapons for brand new players of Seven Days to Die Alpha 19. Now, there are eight weapons that you can craft at the very beginning of the game, and I'm going to go through each of these weapons, starting with the worst weapon for brand new players and ending with what I think is the best weapon for brand new players to use. So let's get to it. Number eight on our list today is the Knuckle Wraps. These are the tier one fist weapons, and honestly, they are not any good for brand new players. And for one simple reason, allow me to demonstrate. The problem with the Knuckle Wraps is you have to get very, very close in order to use them. Now, brand new players are not gonna be used to the movements of Zombie Arlene here, or zombies in general. So you are much more likely to get hit. In the beginning, it is best to keep your distance from the zombies, especially for a brand new player. So getting up close and personal and trying to punch the zombie jerks in the face, well, yes, you can hit them and you can kill them. You are also going to be getting hit quite a lot yourself. So the knuckle wraps are not really the best choice for brand new players. Now, if you decide you do want to go the knuckle wrap route, they are very, very easy to craft. All they take is six iron and two leather. And yes, they can be crafted directly directly from your inventory, you don't need any crafting stations to do so. However, I would highly recommend that brand new players avoid the fist weapons. Get a little bit of experience under your belt, and then maybe on your next go around, give the fist weapons a try. But for brand new players, stay away from the knuckle wraps. Number seven is the bone knife. And this weapon is number seven for the same reason as the knuckle wraps. You just have to get too darn close. Plus, they do not do very much damage. Allow me to demonstrate. Straight. In order to hit the zombie Arlene, you actually have to get right up close and personal in her face. Now, one benefit that the bone knife does have that other weapons do, do, do not is that it give, does have the bleeding effect. But as you can see, I have to get very, very close to the zombie Arlene. She got two hits on me before I was able to kill her, and it took a lot of stabby stabby in order to take her down. I would recommend, however, crafting a bone knife as soon as you can, because they are much more efficient at skinning animals. You get much more resources when you harvest animals and gore blocks with the bone knife than you do with the stone axe. So the bone knife is worth crafting, I just would not recommend using it as your primary weapon if you are brand new to seven days to die. Now, in order to craft up a bone knife, all you're going to need is five bones. So once again, I would recommend crafting a bone knife to harvest gore blocks and animals, but I would not rely on the bone knife as your go-to weapon if you are brand new to seven days to die. Coming in at number six is the Molotov cocktail. Yes, believe it or not, you can craft Molotov cocktails on day one. And these bad boys are extremely effective at taking out groups of zombie jerks. However, for brand new players, they can be very, very dangerous. It is extremely easy to light yourself on fire. I speak from experience because I do this all the time. Another downside for the Molotov cocktail is the crafting recipe. It does take quite a few items in order to craft a Molotov cocktail. You're gonna need one cloth fragment, 300 gas, one oil, and one empty jar. Now on day one, it can be a little difficult to come by these items, especially gas cans cans and oil. These can be very difficult items to find on day one. However, if you do manage to find all the items, or even if you come across these in some loot, they are extremely effective. All you have to do is toss one at a group of zombies, set them all on fire, and the Molotov cocktail deals a tremendous amount of damage. But like I said, you have to be very careful that you don't accidentally set yourself on fire as well. And just like that, look at all of those zombies that we killed with one Molotov cocktail. Now granted, these zombies have their AI turned off, and the Molotov is a little bit harder to use against moving targets. So for instance, we've got a whole bunch of them walking towards us, toss it at their feet, and you can get them all on fire and just let the Molotov do its thing. Again, they are extremely effective. However, finding the ingredients to craft these guys early game can be very, very difficult. Also, it is extremely easy to set yourself on fire as well. So for brand new players, I would recommend to steer clear from the Molotov cocktails in the very beginning of the game. Save them up and maybe you only use them on Horde Night. Coming in at number five on our list is the Stone Sledgehammer. Now the Stone Sledgehammer can deal quite 
quite a bit of damage. But it also comes with some very big negatives as well. Early game in Seven Days to Die is all about stamina management, and the stone sledgehammer is a stamina hog. Just a simple regular attack with the stone sledgehammer costs you 21 stamina. A power attack costs you 42 stamina, meaning you can only do two power attacks before your stamina bar is completely empty and you can no longer attack. Plus, the attack with the stone sledgehammer is very slow, meaning that a lot of times you'll swing for the zombie, but you will not hit where you expect to hit. Using a sledgehammer can take some getting used to. So for new players, I would recommend steering clear of the stone sledgehammer, especially at the very beginning of the game. Number one, the stamina drain is just not worth it. And number two, there is a learning curve to wielding a sledgehammer. Allow me to demonstrate here on the zombie Arlene. So, you see how long it takes to actually rear back and hit with the sledgehammer? If you do not time it right, the zombie will get a hit in on you before your blow actually lands. And the power attack is even worse. Let's say you accidentally miss with the power attack. Now I'm completely out of stamina. I have to wait for my stamina bar to refill before I can go in and try to hit her again. And once again, because the attack was so slow, she actually got a hit in on me. And again. There you go, folks. That just shows you that the stone sledgehammer can be very, very difficult to wield. So I would highly recommend new players steer clear of the sledgehammers in the very beginning of the game. Now, if you do decide to go the stone sledgehammer route, you are going to need 10 small stones, 10 plant fibers, and 10 wood in order to craft a stone sledgehammer. But again, brand new players, be very, very careful if you decide to go the stone sledgehammer route. Number four is the wooden club. Now the wooden club is much better for stamina management. The regular attack only takes about 16 stamina and it refills pretty darn quickly and the power attack takes 25 stamina. That means that you can power attack up to four times before your stamina bar is completely drained. Now it does not deal the most damage out of the early game weapons. However, it does have a relatively quick attack speed and the stamina drain is much much less. Again, early game in seven days to die is all about stamina management. So we've got another zombie Arlene up here and she's coming at us. Now let me demonstrate how you can use the power attack repeatedly. Knock her on her butt, walk up and give her a couple more power attack smacks and she is dead. And we still had 33 stamina remaining, meaning we could have power attacked one more time or if we needed to, we could have backed off and given ourselves a little bit of space to regain our stamina. The wooden club is much easier to manage when it comes to stamina. Plus the wooden club has an extremely cheap crafting cost. All it takes is five wood to craft yourself up a wooden club. This simple weapon is highly effective and great for brand new players of Seven Days to Die. It's much easier to maintain your stamina and it allows you to power attack four times before your stamina bar will be completely drained. The Wooden Club is an excellent choice for brand new players in Seven Days to Die. Coming in at number three is the Blunderbuss. Yes, the Blunderbuss can be crafted on day one. And even if you do not craft up a Blunderbuss, this is the first firearm that you will come across when you are out looting. The Blunderbuss is extremely effective. It does nine damage per pellet with 10 pellets fired per round. But the downside is it only has an effective range of five, meaning you have to get pretty darn close with the zombies. But once you do get close to the zombies, firing this bad boy will pretty much one shot most zombies in the game. So here comes zombie Arlene. She's getting a little too close for comfort. Boom, we shoot her with the blunderbuss down. She goes one shot kill. Awesome. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the reload time on the blunderbuss is kind of slow. So once you fire off that shot, make sure you have a long enough distance between you and the next zombie jerk in order to reload your weapon. Now, another great fact about the blunderbuss, it is technically a shotgun weapon. That means if you put points into strength and put points into boomstick, you can actually make your blunderbuss even better. So 
early game, the blunderbuss is extremely effective and I would highly recommend that you try to get your hands on one as soon as you can. Now, in order to craft the blunderbuss, you are going to need four short iron pipes, two glue and six wood. Now, glue will be the sticking point here, no pun intended, because it can be a little bit more rare to find than some of the other resources. Also, keep in mind that your blunderbuss is going to need ammo. And in order to craft up blunderbuss ammo, you will need one small stone, two gunpowder, and one paper. Now, in my experience with Seven Days to Die, you really don't need to craft up a blunderbuss. You will find these everywhere in loot. Like I said, they will be the first firearms that you can get your hands on in loot. And sooner rather than later, you will have an overabundance of blunderbusses. But all that being said, it is still one of the most powerful day one weapons that you can get your hands on. So for brand new players to Seven Days to Die, I would highly recommend trying to find yourself or craft yourself a blunderbuss. Coming in at number two is the Primitive Bow. Now the great thing about the Primitive Bow is it is a projectile weapon, which means you can keep the zombie jerks at a distance. That is extremely important for brand new players. So here we've got a zombie Arlene heading our way. All we have to do is draw back the bow and pepper her with arrows. All the while we can keep our distance and not have to worry about getting hit. For brand new players, it can be difficult to know the zombie movement patterns. So being able to keep the zombies at a distance is a very good thing. Now, one downside that the bow has is the, the weapon is not very powerful. It will take quite a few arrows in order to take down a zombie jerk. You have to turn them into a pin cushion. However, even though it takes a few shots to take down a zombie, I would much prefer that than having to get up close and personal where the zombie can punch you back in the face. Plus, bows and arrows also come with an extra bonus as well. They can deal quite a bit of sneak damage, 3.5 sneak damage without any points into the sneak perks. Then, Boom, one more arrow takes her down. So not only can you keep the zombies at a distance, you can also deal a ridiculous amount of sneak damage. The primitive bow and arrows are awesome for brand new players. Another great thing about the primitive bow is the crafting cost. It is extremely cheap to make. All it takes is eight wood and three plant fiber. However, one of the downsides to the primitive bow is that it is a projectile weapon, meaning you have to craft ammo for this weapon. Thankfully, the stone arrows are extremely cheap to make. All they cost is one small stone, one wood, and one feather. These are resources that you can get in abundance, making the stone arrows very, very easy to make. So early on in the game, I highly recommend new players craft themselves up a primitive bow and a whole bunch of stone arrows. This weapon is great for brand new players of Seven Days to Die. And the number one weapon for brand new players in Seven Days to Die is the Stone Spear. Now, as I stated previously, in the very beginning for brand new players, it is best to keep the zombies at a distance. However, some of the most effective weapons at doing this are also projectile weapons, meaning you have to create ammo for those weapons. Well, the Stone Spear is the best of both worlds. It is a melee weapon that can be thrown like a projectile. Not only does the regular attack have quite a long reach, the power attack for this weapon actually turns it into a projectile. Plus, in Alpha 19, they added in the little sprite system so you will never lose track of your stone spear. So here we have our zombie Arlene heading towards us. All we have to do is chuck a spear into her, pull out our next one, and give her some stabby stabs. And just like that, she is down. Now, many times the power attack will actually knock a zombie jerk down or stagger them like that. When they stagger or get knocked down on the ground, that allows you to get close enough to pick up your spear. And actually you can get close enough to the zombies to pick up your spear without being in range of their counter attack. So all you have to do is toss it, boom, down she goes. Now we can go up and pick up our spear and keep stabbing. The stone spear is absolutely incredible for brand new players. You're able to keep the zombies at a distance, plus you can also throw it as a projectile to keep them at an even further distance. I would highly recommend that brand new players craft up two or three of these bad boys in the very beginning of the game. Use a couple of them to throw at the zombie jerks and keep one in hand to stab them from a distance. The stone spear is the absolute 
absolute best beginner weapon for brand new players. Plus, the stone spear has an extremely cheap crafting cost. All it takes is five small stones, three plant fibers, and three wood. The stone spear is hands down the best weapon for brand new players beginning Seven Days to Die. Now, if you're new to Seven Days to Die and looking to learn a bit more info to help you get started in this game, I've created a very special playlist of beginner's guide tutorials that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.